Hi, my name's Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, so you might be wondering, is this a special edition of Space Earth Human New Views on Science by Alexander Parkamov? No, I'm just using this as a background and um, I have to say that over the course of this uh, experience of uh, researching Lena, I've had to take a, a new look at some things that I thought were absolutely bonkers in days gone by. And one of them is crystals, and specifically quartz crystals. And so um, you might be asking why in 2018 did I buy a whole bunch of quartz crystals? Well, um, it is because of um, various things that I have researched and their connections to Lena. And uh, one of the things people may know about quartz crystals is that they are piezoelectric. And uh, that means they interact with electromagnetic fields, uh, can create them, and also they cause sparks. This is the principle of your piezo uh, lighter spark or you know gas uh, stove lighter. And also uh, transmission and receiving crystals and also crystals that... Um, are used for timing in uh, certain computers and so forth. So this is a known thing about crystals. Now, why am I talking about this with respect to the supernova experiments? Well, I'm going to show you. So the first point here is that supernova reactor is supposedly creating ball lightning. And if you refer to the study I did of the so-called UFOs over Hestal in Norway, uh, the ball lightning and low energy nuclear reactions, where I drew uh, comparisons between the ball lightning that is produced there in abundance. In fact, it's one of the places in the world which is so predictably producing ball lightning um, that you can uh, reasonably expect to see it if you travel there at the right time of year. And this is some uh, video taken in 2007. Now, uh, I have talked about exotic vacuum objects and how when they break up, they break into seas and and so on, and this could be the explanation behind strange radiation tracks. And here is a very large ball lightning that it impacts a tree, and then it, it splits up, creating the what we call the M and M tracks. When you look at them on very much smaller scales in Lenner experiments, and then these uh, much more broken tracks here. And I talked about how if you have uh, ions going around the outside of it, you would have a ball, then it, when it splits, they're going around the outside and through the inside, and so you end up with broken tracks uh, and so forth, and uh, the more they are splayed out, the more you get the breaks in the track, um, because the EVOs themselves can not sometimes allow light to go through them. Anyway, that's uh, a, a by the by. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is because um, there are researchers that, if I, if I look here for... Um, uh, quartz um, here um, they were trying to explain uh, some researchers here these Italians that had done quite some study of the Hestal and ball lights ball lights uh, lightning uh, kind of effects um, and they were saying that the the light uh, there were no lightning discharges when the light balls were recorded but some other types of electric discharge may occur in the valley due to strong abundance of copper and quartz there you go there's quartz and I agree that obviously, just like that uh, sparker that you can have for uh, li lighting your uh, cigarette lighter or for lighting your, your gas stove, uh, you may be able to uh, imagine the situation, and I suggested later on in this document, that you have the freeze-thaw going on and it's stretching and, and, and pulling on the quartz crystals in the ground and that builds up some charge and then you get these discharges. So that's kind of how um, you might consider that that is occurring. And so um, could this uh, be useful, uh, is my thought, inside uh, the chamber for creating electric discharges? And as, and, and as we know, uh, all electric discharges uh, are, have a relationship to the production of exotic vacuum objects, as per Ken Shoulders. So um, that is one reason for putting them in there. The other one was something that I talked about, actually, in a video that I, I published uh, in the beginning of, of uh, 2018 here, so on the 7th of January 2018, when I visited the equipment 
in Germany, uh, the former Hutchison Lab equipment. So, uh, and I, I talked about how, you know, perhaps the uh, aluminium oxide on here could couple uh, electromagnetic radiation in here. And I also talked about the relationship between, you know, uh, half lambda, uh, n lambda, um, in, in the way that this is uh, in the middle of this particular rod, and this is one third the way in from the n. Anyway, my point was to put a place marker down uh, about this because of this concept that I wanted to do in the supernova uh, and nova reactors as it was at that time. And the specific reason for this was research that was conducted in the late 1950s and early 1960s. And it was conducted at the uh, Department of Physics at the University of Nottingham. And I've got here the, the link the document, uh, one of the documents, and all the links to the videos and, and the UFOs over Stalin and, and the um, links that I'm showing you here will be in the description to the video. But anyway, um, what this is talking about is that, and the, there's a, a more simple look at this in a New Scientist article here, is the what they call the new ultrasonics. And so fascinating opportunities for research into sound waves of unprecedented frequencies like 10 gigahertz or more, have been opened up by the discovery of ways of generating them, including acoustic masers. It is now possible to imagine an ultrasonic microscope working at wavelengths comparable with X-ray rays. Now, what am I talking about? Well, it goes into some detail in these, uh, this New Scientist article and also in the article uh, that was in the journal, British Journal of Applied Physics here in 1963, submitted in 1962. And so what am I suggesting here is that you have the uh, electromagnetic waves and they are creating a field uh, uh, across the crystal and um, it stretch, stretches and squashes uh, the crystal because the crystal is piezoelectric and so it responds to it in that way. And as it's doing this, it's stretching and squashing and stretching and squashing and maybe even stretching, stretching and squashing in this direction or across these kind of angles you are effectively got a hard, flat surface that's creating uh, uh, longitudinal sound waves uh, in the frequency of the driving um, uh, electromagnetic wave, in this case, microwaves. So the idea is that um, uh, you would get sound waves produced from all of these surfaces and maybe there would be uh, different frequencies of sound waves depending on the the thickness uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the length of these various samples uh, and so forth. So the concept I have is to actually arrange these in various orientations inside the reaction chamber because there's, there's plenty of room in there. Um, and for uh, this to potentially uh, uh, create a, a <laughs> sound, i.e., uh, I mean, is it scalar wave? It's, it's certainly longitudinal sound waves, but in the frequency of microwaves. Um, I think this is a very, very interesting uh, concept because what that can then do is it can squish and squash the plasma and the dense plasma uh, in the reaction vessel because the sound will be able to propagate into the reaction vessel and could that have an effect? So some of the experiments that I want to do will be uh, with and without uh, the presence of uh, quartz crystals in the chamber. And so there's two reasons. One is for the reason of uh, the fact that the ball lightning in the Hestalen Valley in Norway, which is very rich in quartz, uh, um, uh, is, has a relationship to ball lightning. And so could these be piezoelectrically driven to produce exotic vacuum objects could then, that could then cluster and do the work inside the supernova reactor. And then the other one is to look to produce longitudinal waves in the microwave uh, frequency range. Uh, and, and could that have an effect on the atomic clusters and uh, exotic vacuum object clusters within the reactor? So that's the idea. It's an idea I've been wanting to explore for a very, very long time. And uh, uh, I um, uh, will be interested to see what happens. So thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next video.